Assalamualaikum and today our group will be presenting about product disclosure sheet which is also called as PDS. In this video, we will tell you guys about the differences between PDS introduced by conventional banks and Islamic banks, the issues and solutions suggested. Our group decided to choose PDS from Maybank Berhad for conventional bank and Bank Islam for the Islamic bank. Now, I am going to explain further about product disclosure sheets. What is PDS? PDS stands for Product Disclosure Sheet, which is a document that is provided by financial service providers to clients or customers when they recommend or offer a financial product. PDS contains information regarding the product's key features, fees, commissions, benefits, risks, and the complaints handling procedure. By referring to product disclosure sheet, it will enable customers or consumers to compare products and services offered by different financial service providers when shopping or purchasing for a financial product or service. The length of product disclosure sheet usually ranging between 4 to 8 pages. Some PDS contains visual aids and simplification of narrative. It uses large text and more concise language as well as the use of signposts such as symbols, diagrams, and prominent titles and subheadings. This would enhance the readability of the product disclosure sheet and help consumers navigate and locate key information in the document. Thank you, Farahani. So for the next part, I'll explain the difference between the conventional bank and Islamic bank. The first difference in terms of objective is conventional bank aims to maximize the wealth of shareholders and accumulate wealth through the institution of interest, while Islamic bank aims to stimulate real economic activities and in this way, it accelerates circulation of wealth and facilitate the distribution of income. The second difference is in terms of earning. Conventional banks earn from interest charge on capital based on time value and predetermined financial capital, while Islamic banks earn profit from trades of goods and service charge provided. The third difference is in terms of exchange. For conventional bank, banking transactions revolve around the assessments of credit risk to borrowers who are credit worthy and safeguarding the position of creditors by ensuring the availability of collateral in the event. And for Islamic bank, the execution of agreement for the exchange of goods and services are a must, while disbursing funds under Murabaha, Salam and Istisna contract, basically the differences lie in agreements of reward. Next, I will explain the differences based on the product disclosure shape. We represent Bank Islam as the Islamic Bank and Maybank Berhad as the conventional bank. The first difference is in terms of rate. Bank Islam Personal Financing I facility is an unsecured or secured third financing which is calculated based on floating rate. Floating rate here means the rate is determined by the private market through supply and demand. Besides that, to align with the Sharia concept which is Tawaru, Bank Islam used the concept of Murabaha which is cost plus profit at the bank's deferred sale price. While Maybank Berhad used a fixed or perch rate which is the rate is determined by the government or central bank to set and maintain as the official exchange rate. The reason is the link with the currency stability. Next, I will explain the difference in what will the customer get if they purchase Bank Islam Personal Financing I. Financing amount offered by Bank Islam is minimum 10,000 ringgit Malaysia and maximum 300,000 ringgit Malaysia without collateral or if more than 300,000 ringgit Malaysia, collateral is required. Next for financing tenure is maximum 10 years or up to 60 years of age. For the profit rate, Bank Islam used base rate as reference and since I mentioned earlier, Bank Islam used a floating rate which means they determine the rate through the supply and demand by private market. If they purchase Maybank personal loan, financing amount offered is minimum 5,000 and maximum amount is 100,000. For financing tenure starting from 2 years to 6 years. Since Maybank Berhad used a fixed rate Per annum, so it is fixed referring to the loan amount. The higher the loan amount, the lower the interest rate could be. For the last difference is in terms of guarantor. 
Bank Islam may require guarantors or collateral in order to proceed with the submission and if do not meet the minimum credit requirement. For May Bank Berhad, no guarantor or collateral is required. That is all for me for the differences between Bank Islam and May Bank. I'll pass to you, Fatin Akilah. Thank you, Anis Nadira, for the explanation. Now, I would like to continue about the issue that had been arised in Maybank Berhad and Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad. Let's take a look at conventional bank first, which is Maybank. The issue that had been arised in Maybank PDS personal loan is they do not put the exact amount of other charges imposed by the bank. This method is contrary to Sharia principles where the use of uncertainty concept is prohibited in Islam. The customer may lead to be a victim of fraud for not knowing the actual amount of charge imposed on the product they take. This can be proved in the PDSC that any other reasonable fees and charges imposed by the bank for services and facilities rendered to the customer. In this statement, they do not state the real amount to be paid by the customer. To conclude, hidden amount of other charge by the bank should be eliminated. Next, the second issue is the concept of uncertainty. Uncertainty is when the claim of ownership is unclear and suspicious. In this matter, my bank berhad do not state accurately in the PDS about the amount that need to be paid by the customer if they do not fulfill the installment payment. It will lead to the concept of uncertainty where it is forbidden in Islam. Islam do not teach their adherents to take something doubtful because there will be more bad impact rather than good impact. This element will lead to disputes between bank and the clients because the customer will feel inflicting a sense of injustice as well as persecution on the other party. This uncertainty is prohibited in Islam and should be avoided either in conventional bank or Islamic bank. Now let's take a look at Bank Islam PDS. First, they disclose the exact amount of other charge. In Islam, telling information clearly when doing a contract is highly demanded because Islam forbids the concept of ambiguity. In this case, Bank Islam had disclosed clearly the exact amount of late charge in the PDS of financing loans. This will help a lot for the customer to calculate their budget. For example, in the PDS had clearly stated that the customer need to pay other charge for stamp duty 0.5% from total financing amount as stated in the Stamp Duty Act 1949 and Wakala fee 50 ringgit. From the statement, we can see that Bank Islam had clearly told the exact of other charge to be paid. Thus, disclose the exact amount of any charges should be stated clearly in the PDS to make sure all the clients understand and know their terms and conditions before they sign the agreement. Secondly, is the concept of Tawil and Ramara. Bank Islam also not spark in charging the customer who late in paying the installment. For Islamic banking, Tawil and Ramara concept has been used to find the customer who late in paying the installment. Ta'win is referred to an amount that may be compensated to the Islamic banking institution based on actual loss incurred due to default, while Gomorrah is defined as penalty charge on the defaulters over and above the ta'win. However, they do not directly charge the customer. They send several notices and take legal action if the customer fails to respond to the reminder notice before they charge for the late payment. This can be proved in the PDS where they clearly state the step of late charge payment for the customer. Therefore, the use of Ta'win and Ramara concept is very strict in their terms and details to avoid from usury and uncertainty practices in Islamic financial system in Malaysia. Next, I will proceed with the solution based on the issue arise in Bank Islam and Mi Bank. So first, I will proceed with the Bank Islam. So as we all see and know, Bank Islam is actually following the Sharia principles. Then this is close the exact amount of other charge and follow the concept of Ta'wid and Gamara. But Islamic banking is actually lacks of skill and expertise in the Sharia community, especially, especially when it comes to the Sharia compliance. They need to enhance the skills and expertise of Sharia compliance in Islamic banking. So this is important when they need to answer the questions, issues or disputes dispute that arise in the Islamic financial market related to Sharia compliance. This is because the aspect of Sharia co compliance is a major demand, especially in Muslim market. Sharia compliance is the uniqueness in Islamic finance that distinguish the conventional finance. Next, I will proceed to the conventional banking, which is Mibank. So the issue arise in this bank is actually the hidden the amount of other charge and also there is a concept of uncertainty or garar in all the business transaction. 
So, but to actually solve this problem, they need to prohibit the concept of uncertainty or current in the financial transaction. All the business of financial transaction must be transparency, accuracy, and disclosure all the necessary information so the other party has no advantages to the other party. They should make the proper guideline to make sure all the payment and the transactions are clearly stated in the agreement. This is to protect other people from the deceit and ignorance. Now, we move on to the conclusion. There are two main points in importance of product disclosure sheet PDS which are the first one is to provide the information about the organization. Importantly, it will give an understanding about the risk and returns, also about the fees and charges. The consumers must be given the PDS before investing in financial product in order to help all the consumers to make better financial decisions. The second importance is to prevent present bias. Present bias sometimes happen during the period of investing in the financial product. For example, people may overborrow and pay down debt slower than they want. Also, people might ignore charges that may be incurred in the future or changes in the interest rate. Therefore, the PDS will prevent present bias in consumer decision and provide the information about the selected bank. Essentially, we have highlighted the Islamic finance issues in Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad such as Bank Islam disclosed the exact amount of the other change and they used the concept of Ta'wid and Nova Marok while the Islamic finance issues in Maybank Berhad is they hide the amount of charge and they also applying concept of uncertainty which is prohibited in Islam. In addition to that, we also explain about the solution to the Islamic finance issues and the difference between conventional bank and Islamic bank's products offered. Thus, PDS is very useful for helping consumers make informed decisions when purchasing the financial product and having a clear understanding about the main features and the risk of the products. That's all from our group. Thank you for listening.